Member O'Farrell. Present. Council Member Bruce Cayeno. Good morning here. Council Member Caretz. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Price. Council Member Krikorian. Here. And Council Member Cedillo. Present. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lid. In a moment, we'll hear from members of the public who wish to comment on items specific to today's agenda, and I'll turn it over to our city attorney to explain the speaking rules to members of the public who are dialing in and to our city clerk to provide the necessary information for the public to be heard. Please go ahead. Um, can we have the clerk read in the dial-in information first, please? Sure. All right. Members of the public who'd like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254 Five two five two, and use meeting ID number one six one five one six three nine six nine, and then press the pound key. Press the pound key again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak up to two minutes total. Because this is a special meeting, there's no general public comment. We'll tell you when your time's up. When speaking on the agenda items, it must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not on topic or if we can't tell whether you're on topic, you'll get one brief warning from me or the chairman. At that point, if you don't immediately get clearly on topic or again stray off topic, you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. All of the items on the agenda are open for public comment. For members of the public calling in to speak, when it's your turn, an automated Zoom voice will prompt you to press star six to unmute yourself. If you don't do so, council staff will prompt you once more. At that point, you need to immediately press star six to unmute yourself or forfeit, unfortunately, you'll forfeit your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. Finally, if you're also listening to the committee meeting on your computer or other device, please turn down the volume on those other devices immediately when it's your turn to speak between feedback and a possible time delay between the live meeting and what's on the internet, it causes a great deal of confusion if you're listening on multiple devices. And with that, Mr. Chairman, we are ready to begin public comment. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, let, let's begin with the calls. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hello, my name is Estella Suarez Hamilton. I'd like to speak on items one, two and three and four. All right, you have three minutes for the items. Please begin. If, if I may correct you, Mr. Chairman, it's actually two minutes. Two because it's a special meeting. So two minutes for the items and no public comment today. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. You have two minutes, please begin. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. In relation to priorities and working groups in items two through four, due to the history of the Olympics, Organizers can never have any higher priorities without first acknowledging the dried blood on the hands of everyone involved in this gross ritual. The first Summer Olympics held in the U.S. was the 1904 World's Fair. The World's Fair featured a human zoo where people were trafficked from their nation to be forced into squalid exhibits on full display to celebrate American scientists and provide human experiments to support eugenics ideology. Some people who were killed during the fair had their organs trafficked and many of their brains still belong to the Smithsonian. Regarding item one, the youth in agreement, the youth agreement, Otabenga is the name of a black child who was trafficked by the World Fair. He was put on display as an adult cannibal, even though his age is now estimated to be around 10 years old. In 1906, he was then trafficked to the New York's Bronx Zoo and put on display naked in the monkey house. We the people are opposed to the continuation of the eugenicist Olympics games. Thank you for my time, God bless. And we're ready for our next call. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Sam Williams, employee number 794671LADWP, agenda items one and two. All right, Mr. Williams, you have two minutes, please begin. City Council members, I have emailed you regardless over months and months about racism and everything else going on inside the city. 
how can you propose a budget to interact with you in the city of Los Angeles if you are not willing to confront sexual battery against female employees, pedophilia, and other acts going on inside of the city? There is no way that we can bring the Olympics here to the city of Los Angeles equally, fairly, without some type of discrimination or racism going on. This is not a city fit for the Olympics or for the Paralympics or any other kind of games until you city councilman, Mr. Kikorian, who is going to the federal prison, and the rest of you, if you don't address the racism going on. This city is in no position to host any games, any kind of thing, until you address this racism. Mayor Eric Garcetti, if you lose your ambassadorship, the rest of you councilmen are going to jail soon. I'll see you at Budget and Finance at 2 p.m. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hi, this is Gigi. Um, I'm from No Olympics. I'm a volunteer, and I would like to speak on items one, two, three, and four. All right, you have two minutes. Please begin. Um, I would like to express my dismay that um, we are having even the shams of a working group um, um, coming up um, when, first of all, um, the people of Los Angeles did not come to a democratic agreement on whether or not we wanted these games to happen in the first place. Um, in addition, some of these working groups are complete um, shams. Um, one of them, uh, the human rights working group, uh, cannot happen because um, the way that Los Angeles um, is dealing with the people who are unhoused on the streets of our city there is no humane way to deal with it in the way that we are currently doing it. Um, there's no humane way to sweep unhoused people out of the places that they are staying because the city will not provide adequate housing for all of the residents here. So there, there is no way to have human rights during an Olympics. The Olympics are incompatible with human rights because the way an Olympics works in any city is they, um, is it's basically just a huge real estate scam um, and a way to cleanse the city of our unhoused population of poor people um, in an act that um, is really like a disgusting extermination of people in poverty. Um, so there is no way to have a human rights commission for an Olympics because this is what is caused, this is what happens in every Olympics. Um, it happened in Rio. It happened um, in the Beijing Olympics. Um, it happened in Tokyo. There is no humane Olympics, and there are no human rights in the Olympics. And throwing on a, a coat of shiny paint by saying, we're going to have youth sports and we're going to have some soccer games. Um, have you guys looked into how the uh, swimming, um, the youth sports um, swimming budget was used? Um, Thank you, Carl. The, that is time. Thank you. Mr. Chair, there are no more speakers in the queue. All right. Thank you. That does conclude public comment then. Appreciate it. Uh, colleagues, I'd like to take items one and two together. Mr. Clerk, if you could please read the item. Item number one, joint CAO and CLA and Board of Recreation Parks Commissioner's reports relative to proposed First Amendment to the Youth Sports Partnership Agreement for Olympic and Paralympic Games 2028. Item two is also a joint CAO CLA report and Board of Recreation and Parks Commissioner report relative to proposed Department of Recreation and Parks 2022-23 project plan pursuant to the 2028 Youth Sports Partnership Agreement between the Department of Recreation and Parks and the Los Angeles Organizing Committee for LA 2028. Thank you, sir. Colleagues, this committee and the full city council unanimously voted to approve a project plan for our city's youth sports program, which is a partnership with the Los Angeles Organizing Committee for the 2028 Games. This meant more recreational opportunities for LA's youth with a particular focus on economically disadvantaged communities and for special needs youth. It includes coaching, mentoring, and instructions for young Angelinos at city parks and recreation centers. This program offers one step in paving the way for a new generation of Angelinos to grow up with greater access to sports and recreational programming that can keep young people healthy throughout their lifetimes. $160 million will be provided to the city to support, enhance, 
and develop this citywide program. Since, in, since its inception, we've gone to great lengths to ensure that this program is accessible. Uh, and for those especially that want to get involved, this program will fund local transportation to access these facilities, as well as lowered costs for membership fees and for leagues and classes associated with a national governing body. This will offer significant relief for anyone impacted by the current state of the economy. Because of this program's success, I also introduced a motion in which we will work on developing a citywide adaptive sports program, including recommendations for physical accessibility infrastructure improvements to its existing or emerging facilities with a focus on the expansion of services to transitional age youth 18 to 24, adults and older adults, including equipment, staffing, training, or, or other particular needs. My motion also instructed the Department of Recreation and Parks and the Department on Disability to work with adaptive sports and accessibility advocate partners locally and throughout the nation and to report to council with recommendations on the improvement of service delivery for adaptive sports citywide. It's critical that we prioritize the health of our younger generations. Outside of the obvious physical benefits of exercise, sports actually encourage healthy overall development and improve academic outcomes. I know that from my personal experience with youth athletics. Uh, sports are an incredible way for younger people to socialize, gain confidence, learn how to work as a team, resolve conflict, and create community. In other words, fulfilling the Olympic ideal. It's critical that these opportunities are equally accessible to marginalized communities, which is what makes this program so vital to the city of Los Angeles. I'd like to thank everyone involved for the effort they've put into this program, especially LA 2028 and our Department of Recreation and Parks. Without you, this project would not move forward. I'd also like to thank our CLA and CAO for their thorough review and for being part of this process. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to our departments to go over the report. Uh, anyone can jump in who would like to start. CLA, CEO, Recreation and Parks, 2028, all, all present. Mr. Wickham. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, it's probably best for Recreation and Parks to jump in. They are fully engaged in this program and can provide the uh, overview for you. All right, let's do it. Good morning, council members. Thank you so much for having us this morning and um, proud to be joined by all of the colleagues that you mentioned who have been working very hard um, on getting us to where we are today. So we are excited to, uh, in item number one, bring you the first uh, amendment to the youth sports uh, program contract. Um, as you noted, sir, this uh, in negotiation with LA28 and wanna thank them for their partnership um, helped us to begin to realize that as we grow this program, um, certain opportunities that um, arise and are necessary to increase particip participation and access among all kids um, includes things beyond just the fundamentals of delivering a sports program. So case in point is transportation, as you mentioned. We're offering some very exciting and new programs that we've never done in the city of Los Angeles. Um, among them equestrian, surfing, um, new types of golf uh, instructions at much higher levels and more robust throughout the city. Um, and to do that, we need to be able to bring the children to the recreation centers. If we don't have the means to do that, the classes become almost fruitless uh, for the parents uh, to get their children. So um, with this amendment to the youth sports program agreement, uh, we have reached agreement to allow transportation cost um, as an example of a permissible uh, cost to do that. Also, we have in partnership with LA 2028 uh, began to realize that we are planning to grow our classes and our leagues and our participation um, to higher levels of competition should students find that they really uh, are connected with the sport and want to excel and want to go on. And so um, at appropriate levels for uh, recreation and park certified classes, uh, we will be able to offer a membership fee uh, through the NGBs, which are the national governing bodies. Um, some examples might be USA Swim, 
uh, U.S. tennis, USA judo. Um, and what that does, it enables a child to um, be part of that organization, um, have a number assigned to them for competition, for tracking, have access to other resources that are offered. And um, this amendment will allow for um, appropriate and sanctioned uh, NGB membership fees to be offered uh, to each child. This is really important because this is a stepping stone uh, for children who are interested in sport and who want to continue and perhaps uh, seek a scholarship uh, to college or just develop more um, in, in the world of athletics that wouldn't normally be available to them. And lastly, the amendment allows for um, uh, more use of the other defined cost, which is a general cost category, uh, which will enable us with 2028 um, in years ahead to look at perhaps other um, appropriate and mutually agreed upon areas to enhance the program. And so it just adds some more clarity to that. And that in a nutshell is the amendment. It's very positive for the city. And again, wanna thank LA 2028. Um, the next item is um, requesting your approval for the 22-23 uh, project plan. Uh, this project plan was unanimously approved by the Recreation and Parks uh, Commission just a few days ago and is now here for your consideration. And I wanna thank all of your offices um, throughout the city who have worked with us uh, patiently uh, as we all paused recreational programming during the pandemic, uh, but who have showed a demonstrated and renewed commitment uh, to recreation and parks to bring back um, our Play LA program. That's what we're calling this program, by the way. It's the City of Los Angeles's Play LA Youth and Adaptive Sports Program. And uh, it will be present in throughout the entire city. And so this project plan is a request uh, to approve $17 million, $17.5 million uh, for years 22 to 23 and approximately half a million will be used um, as the first step to grow the adaptive sports program. Where that will take us uh, is from a, an initial $160 million, um, that will now draw us down to 130 million. Um, we've used approximately $3 million in the first, or excuse me, $2 million in the first two swim LA programs that you might remember we started with, and then uh, an approximate uh, another two to 4 million in the past year's programming. And now with this uh, drawdown, it'll take us to 130 million, which gives us approximately $20 million to spend uh, each year now through 2028. And so um, we're very excited about this year's program. We have a vast array of offerings, um, some of the the things that we can look forward to exposing our youth are surfing, as I mentioned, track and field, judo, tennis, skateboarding, taekwondo, marathon training, equestrian, youth golf, um, and some new, new sports like rowing and uh, a, a new sport called tag ball. Um, so these are just some examples of really exciting things. And I'm just gonna end on one note. Um, Councilwoman Rodriguez had asked us to really look in um, to working not only in the development of equestrian, um, but, and we are doing that and we're really excited, but also other members expressed um, a desire for our kids to get more involved in the adaptive community. And could we think about sports such as equestrian which might not be on the front of our list, um, a natural thought of being adaptive. And we were able through a robust RFQ program to bring on some adaptive providers. And we're really excited. We have partnerships at the LA um, Equestrian Center, at the Hanson Dam um, Center, as well as a center down in South Compton um, who uh, has horse training and they've all agreed to partner and grow that program. So we will be doing that for able-bodied kid, kids and non-able-bodied kids. And then lastly, um, Councilwoman Rodriguez, you had also asked us to really look into developing running and trying to find partnership with Students Run LA. Uh, we're excited to report that we think that is an amazing organization. We're working very closely with them and we are going to start a pilot program of bringing their kids through recreation and parks programs and begin uh, the fundamentals of running, 
which we think is um, going to be a great sport in years ahead for kids. It's easy, it's fun, and it's healthy. So with that, um, I will pause for any of my other colleagues, but again, would like to thank all of the people that you mentioned, as well as the city attorney's office who really worked hard uh, to get these drafts in place. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, JP. Uh, I know there are others who are going to want to uh, present, so how about Hi. You? Council yes. Member. Okay. Mr. Roth. My name, my name is Robert Roth with the Office of the CIO. Uh, there's not a lot more to add from what APD has just provided us. It's such a thorough uh, presentation on it, but just want to highlight that uh, the fiscal impact from this uh, youth sports participation, uh, excuse me, partnership program is that there is no impact on the general fund. Well, I think we all understand that, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, funding is provided by LA28 to a special fund called the YSP Fund, and it receives funding uh, on a quarterly basis from LA28. Um, that's really the no notable part that uh, I'd like to emphasize that AP didn't already cover. Thank you so much, Mr. Roth. Uh, would anyone from LA2028 like to weigh in? I know we have uh, Carla, we have Patricia. Uh, so please, uh, please weigh in. Well, why don't I just jump in on behalf of LA28 and Patricia, feel free. Um, thank you. And first of all, uh, like uh, uh, the previous speakers, I think uh, AP certainly did a, a great representative representation of what uh, we anticipate happening here in, 20, in, in fiscal year 22 and 23. But most importantly, from an LA28 uh, standpoint, we are incredibly excited to uh, continue to break down barriers for kids to play. Uh, and I think that's the overriding initiative um, as we continue to work in partnership and uh, thank the Rex and Park Program and AP uh, for all of uh, the collective support we anticipate. This is the start of many great things that we'll bring to bear for the kids of Los Angeles. So otherwise, nothing more to add other than what AP has already uh, outlined. Thank you. And Katie Carter from LA28, thank you so much. Uh, anyone else? All right. It looks like uh, perhaps no one else is going to weigh in. We'll, we'll begin. Just, I just have one question in, in relation to the 22-23 program. Um, does this amendment uh, allow for reimbursement costs that, of the year that we're currently in, the fiscal year that we're currently in? Um, I can defer to Mr. Roth, but uh, the uh, program cost in the amendments will be um, are, will be included in the project plan that you are approving today. So yes. Terrific, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, I know Ms. Rodriguez had her hand up, uh, followed by Mr. Cedillo. Thank you so much and um, <clears throat> thank you AP for uh, covering uh, all of those sports and the additions uh, that have been incorporated in the efforts to uh, include SRLA because I, I, for me, it's really important SRLA not only is widely accessible throughout the entire city because of uh, the school campuses where they're active, um, but uh, it's, you know, it, frankly, having partners in this will help us achieve uh, bigger numbers and participation because it's making it more accessible directly on the school campuses as well. So I know that's gonna be important. Um, <clears throat> and I'm excited about the, uh, you know, the additions to the equestrian, obviously. Uh, I think that's, it's going to make it more widely accessible than it currently is, uh, or that people frankly note the amenities that we have in, in, uh, in, in different parts of the city. So I think it's great. Um, you know, the one area that stood out to me as a potential opportunity for us to make better leverage uh, that wasn't mentioned among, I, I love all the diversity of the different sports uh, opportunities that we're offering, but we miss cycling. And uh, and cycling, what, uh, what makes the addition or incorporation of cycling uh, perhaps, you know, more attractive is the ability for us right now to leverage with state ATP grants some of the infrastructure developments and in protected bike lanes, Vision Zero, uh, it will enable us, frankly, to build out more of that infrastructure. Uh, you know, I, I think about, like, for example, we just did a whole restriping and protected bike lanes in the Latuna Canyon area, 
all these areas where frankly a lot of cyclists in the city uh come out to uh this you know this particular part of my district is very hilly uh but it's uh one for a lot of folks who are interested in more competitive cycling but i i look at these you know this particular piece as an opportunity for us to also uh, integrate some of the you know frankly some of the efforts that our Department of Transportation and Street Services are working on to improve that infrastructure citywide. And so um, I think we should be looking at incorporating that piece as well, uh, because, you know, for a lot of lower socioeconomic uh, communities, cycling is a necessity. <laughs> it's a, it's, you know, it's, a, you know, they could probably do so competitively because uh <clears throat> because they you know are regular and avid cyclists and i think it might be something that we could uh certainly consider uh incorporating uh as we engage in these conversations going forward and i'm not familiar i, I don't pretend to be a cyclist uh but i just i i definitely want to seize that opportunity and i think uh there's a uh, there's a multifaceted benefit uh just in terms of perhaps as particularly as we're getting ready to go into budget. Uh, but uh, I think it would be great both for for our needs and what we're doing with DOT and street services. Uh, I think it would, you know, create uh, another added benefit. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Cedillo. Mr. Cedillo, would you? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. There you go. Thanks to check off this little uh, computer here. So uh, a couple of points real quick. Thank all of you for the incredible work you're doing. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that uh, LA with uh, two prior Olympics uh, leading the way in the world about how to do this uh, the right way. And now we're even doing it in a greater way. And so uh, representing the district that I represent, an abundance of low-income people, what we're looking at is all the incredible opportunities. And so uh, let me restate the commitment uh, for Students Run LA. My office is a big uh, donor, participant. Uh, I just spoke to a young woman this weekend, she's talking to her dad, and she happened to call in, and so he put her on the phone. And she's uh, Students Run LA, and now she's at uh, UC California Merced. And uh, the success rate of students run LA is just incredible. And so we just have to, an organization like that, I, I can't say enough about it. We just need to support all the participants, make sure they have the resources. Uh, one of the key things is transportation. And I know in, in the communities that I represent, transportation is huge um, because uh, they're, you know, public transit dependent, and that's not always accommodating for, for the uh, activities that we're talking about uh, in this instance. So it's important that we have uh, transportation and integrate that uh, from this budget into to the department. Second thing is crew. Uh, there's a small school in my district that uh, focuses on crew, and uh, the principal tells me that they will get a scholarship for their students uh, and the rate is 50% when they add that the participant comes from crew. So all these sports inspire young people. It all motivates people to want to go to college and participate and be active, et cetera. But none has the better success rate uh, than crew. And it's just amazing. And so it helps young people get into uh, all these incredible schools throughout the nation because they could say, on crew and and they're able to get uh, scholarships and participate in and who would think that that's the case uh we'll talk uh, offline later about my school specifically uh because the challenges for them are you know getting the boats uh getting the equipment uh, uh storing them uh, moving them uh, you know they have very big logistic challenges logistical challenges uh, that hopefully through this process, we can uh, help them institutionalize this program and stabilize it in a way that it becomes uh, a full feature, not just for them, but for other schools to utilize to uh, help advance uh, these young people. So thank you for doing 
all that you're doing and these points specifically. And then, of course, uh, shouldn't be, uh, we don't need to state it, but we should state it because it's important uh, given the uh, misstatements and that all this is done uh, without any cost to the city. And that is so important uh, for people to understand, uh, to get off their irrelevant talking points uh, because it doesn't matter what's happened in other cities. And what only matters is what's happening in this city and what the future looks like for us. And so uh, I thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Well said on the disinformation machine. It's very, very active. Uh, and Mr. Krikorian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just before I ask my question, just on that, that point about impacts on the general fund, um, I'm, I'm glad that um, both Mr. Cedillo uh, and uh, I think it was Mr. Roth or, uh, mentioned that there's no impact on the on the general fund. I will say um, uh, that certainly as long as I'm budget chair, there will also be no supplantation of uh, expenditures that we're going to make anyway. Uh, so there's no uh, we're not going to save money in the general fund because we're receiving this money. We are going to spend uh, what we would otherwise have spent on park services, and this will be entirely additive. So uh, I just want to make clear that as long as I'm budget chair, that's going to be the case. Um, I, the question I had, I guess, kind of ties a number of the other comments uh, about different sports uh, together so we can understand going forward, since this is going to be an annual exercise, um, how, what is the process for determining these um, very particularized appropriations for different sports? Um, like, as I look at this list, I'm surprised, for example, that um, tennis is not a higher expenditure. I mean, we can talk about other, other sports that Rec and Parks doesn't currently provide any programs in, but there's a tennis court in every single neighborhood in Los Angeles at a park, and um, they're always filled. So um, that, that's just one example of the, the kind of sports uh, program that's already very robust, um, but just for purposes of equity and, and so on that, you know, maybe should be supported more. So I I'm just wondering how how were these determinations made? What was the sausage grinder that resulted in these particular amounts? That's an excellent question. And you know, following up, some of them are, and I would encourage all council offices and their staff, and and we will be even working with you closer to really understand sort of what our collective goals are. And what I mean is that. Uh, and I'll answer your specific question right now, is that um, you all sometimes know groups, um, case in point, Students Run LA, um, that was an excellent referral. And we wanna keep working with those groups. The, um, the comments about cycling, fantastic, because these are also sports. We want these kids to be able to uh, access and learn about sports that they could also take into their adult life easily. Um, but to your point, sir, with the adaptive sports, uh, we had to develop um, an RFQ process because we were not equipped uh, to do adaptive sports for obvious reasons in the right ways. One day we will be, but for now, uh, we wanted to go out with providers uh, that could suggest sports and that we knew we could easily ramp up to. Um, in terms of the uh, other recreational programs, uh, a combination. So we're guided by an overall principle of trying to work on uh, the introduction of Olympic related sports. Um, that's a request of LA 2028. And it's something to help get kids excited about the games that are coming. Um, the other sort of overlining layer is the introduction perhaps of new sports that have never been done before. And we're doing that. Uh, but we also are focusing on some of the core sports that we can do um, among them, you know, soccer, basketball, uh, baseball, things like that, that we already have the infrastructure to support. Um, and then other sports are things that we have begun in partnership to kind of anticipate might be uh, sort of more popular LA sports. So give a shout out to, for instance, skateboarding, surfing, things that we know will be in the Olympics. 
Um, but tennis is an excellent point. That's something we want to grow more. Uh, we actually need to do some infra a little bit more infrastructure repairs. And we're starting conversations with USTA tennis um, that will be able to grow that line item number. So you're right, it's small, but the intent is to grow it bigger. Um, but part of the introduction of sports, some of these sports you, you may see may drop off or may add on because some of them are introdu introduced via like a class or clinic, you know, to see if a kid will really, uh, or our kids in the city will really like a sport. And if we see tremendous popularity, then we'll grow that. Um, and we'll want to learn. We want to have more listening sessions, and we will be doing a lot more community outreach on our uh, Play LA program to hear from parents in the community, you know, what are your goals? Um, one example in Paris in 2024, hip hop uh, dancing or break dancing is going to be now part of the Olympics, a sanctioned approved Olympic sport. So is that something we might want to uh, you know, visit with some of the kids in our community who are so talented in that way. And we might bring that on. So um, some of it is guided by the overall desire to add Olympic related sports. Some of it is guided by the introduction of new sports. And then some of it is us working together as a city in consultations with parents to find out what kids are interested in um, and then uh, grow some of those traditional sports like tennis. So that's kind of how we're we're guiding our program right now, but it will continue to evolve. Great. Yeah, I just, to me, going forward, the single most important factor that should govern all of this is uh, what investments are going to maximize the greatest degree of youth participation in sports per dollar, you know, and, and it, that that's really what our emphasis should be is getting, you know, the the most bang for the buck in getting more kids who are not currently active in sports to become active in sports. So that's that, that will be my guiding light anyway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Krikorian. Um, just uh, one, one added question. I was, we're just, we're talking about how, how the city can, can help accommodate this uh, these these goals and these objectives. This is kind of a one-off question that I just thought of. We have so many city swimming pools now. They're not Olympic regulation, and and I get that. Uh, but nonetheless, we can do you know training, etc. Um, and a lot of these pools have springboard springboards for diving. Is there a way we could retrofit city pools with Olympic regulation springboard diving? specific specifications, including height above the water, width, et cetera, that would seem to be a relatively easy retrofit. And you could have someone uh, teach springboard diving an Olympic sport uh, at our public swing pools. And um, we could have across Los Angeles, future Olympic champions in 2028 right now as we speak, perhaps that could be some sort of sponsorship opportunity. And again, relatively easy to retrofit our pools that already have springboards. Just, just a thought. So I'm just putting it out there, spontaneously thought of it as I'm sitting here listening to the comments. Uh, sir, that's a great idea. We'll definitely explore that to see rather than, you know, building a, well, first of all, it, it should be a goal of all of ours to have, to, to have an Olympic size pool one day and perhaps the, the right diving platforms for that. Uh, but to your point, as we're bringing on new pools, we, we just brought on uh, opening up our newest pool uh, at the Michelle and Barack Obama Recreation Center, which was formerly uh, styled uh, Rancho La Cienega, uh, which is being was built in a new way and allows for more diving. But I don't believe this, the, the type you're talking about, but I would happily explore that with our Bureau of Engineering and and see if it's the you know the right size. Find out more information about the depths and so forth because it does sound like perhaps that could be a modification or we should think think about that going forward if it could be done. So thank you for bringing that up um, and I'm happy to explore that because you're right. Diving is also there's so many sports, but that also is a one that is just so popular and so um, could be really great in Southern California. Okay. Councilman, you're you're round. Yes, Mr. Wickham. Uh, just, just as an aside, because this is the Olympics, 
um, Sammy Lee, who is a Los Angeles resident and Olympic diver, um, a course, graduate of medals. Occidental College and mm -hmm. USC, right? So diving has a, an Olympic history with Los Angeles. And so you, you're right on point with that. And, and just to say, it, it's infinitely safer than platform diving. That's a whole new realm of requirements for platform. But springboard um, doesn't require this necessarily the same depth of the pool. Uh, and it would be a lower cost retrofit of our swimming pools. Um, and I can think of the ones in my own district where you could have a retrofitted uh, springboard and, and get in the business of training future Olympians just on the springboard sport alone without having to build a whole new pool or without having to build platforms. So I think you get my point. I don't want to drive it into, into the ground. Uh, but yes, we have a wonderful tradition in Los Angeles of, of diving medalists. So thank you. All right. So colleagues, it's been a great conversation. And um, I'd like to move to approve items uh, one and two. These are phenomenal amendments that just spread greater equity across uh, the neighborhoods that need them the most. So I congratulate everyone on their collaboration uh, with making these amendments uh, happen. So with that, uh, let's please call the roll. Uh, yes, Council Member O'Farrell. Aye. Council Member Buscaino. Aye. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. Council Member Kerkorian. Aye. And Council Member Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Thank you, Mr. Lid. Uh, let's uh, go into item three now, Mr. City Clerk. Item three, joint CAO and CLA report relative to benchmarks and commitments for working groups and other priorities identified in the games agreement for LA 28. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, my goal as the chair of this committee and just as a city council member from the very beginning when this decision uh, to host the 2028 games was to always ensure that Los Angeles uh, benefits from a lasting legacy uh, with a concern and a focus on Los Angeles after the closing ceremonies in the summer of 2028. Uh, we approach our task with a clear recognition of the considerable challenges that currently face our great city to get the best Olympic Games agreement ever of any city and one that helps us build a more livable and equitable Los Angeles post-28. Last time in committee, we discussed the need for LA 2028 to establish working groups to develop legacy plans for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. We also instructed the CEO and CLA to present a report that establishes benchmarks and deadlines for LA 28 to establish working groups that include labor and the community and create plans for the various city priorities listed in the Games Agreement. At this time, I'd like to hand it back over to our CLA and CAO to go over the report before us. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, Mr. Wickham. Uh, and if you want to rearrange the order, that's just fine, but I'll hand it over to you right now. Great, thank you. Uh, John Wickham with the Office of the Chief Legislative Analyst. Um, back in December, the council adopted the games agreement, which was um, a substantial step forward in establishing the working relationship between LA 28 and the city and moving forward to um, the 28 games. Uh, part of that, as you pointed out, was the establishment of a number of working groups to focus on key and important areas to establish and develop a legacy for these games um, leading up to and beyond um, 2028. There were six um, working groups that were identified related to community business procurement, local hire, sustainability, arts and culture, human rights, and then the long-term overarching legacy. And so the CAO, CLA, and mayor's office worked um, together with LA28 to um, develop the, the proposed benchmarks that are presented to you today. These um, benchmarks, the benchmark document provides a description of the um, of each of these committees. It uh, provides a calendar for the benchmarks um, to allow us to gauge the progress toward um, the work that's being done or that will be done. 
there are categories of organizations that are identified who will be invited to participate in the process. And um, there's a significant focus on community involvement through the participation of these organizations to ensure, I think, to Mr. Cedillo's point earlier in the committee, that this is the law, you know, this is the Los Angeles games. This is the Los Angeles approach to developing and building the legacy for the games. This is, um, and so all of this work is being driven in that direction. Um, the, our, our report also identifies four additional uh, planning groups, two of which uh, mobility and safety, and then that, um, that uh, we'll focus on those areas. Uh, and then two, of, uh, two are also um, driven by the city itself. The city is actually the lead on the airport operations group and on the games energy council. And so um, what we will be doing is providing uh, at council's instruction reports every six months on the um, progress in meeting the benchmarks that have been outlined here. And we will uh, work with LA28 as a city team to um, advance the, the work that's being done. The, I would like to um, bring forward, there was one error in our CAO CLA report. We um, originally had an instruction to report by April 30th with the first uh, results of the benchmarks. Since that's just a two or three weeks away, there's really, and you're adopting these benchmarks right now, there's really nothing to report by April 30th. What we would like to recommend is that we, uh, the CAO CLA be directed to report by June 30th to give you an immediate progress report and then um, uh, start up the every six month reporting beginning on October 30th of 22. So um, that's my quick overview. Uh, Robert Roth with the CAO is here and Kathy Carter with LA28 may have some additional information to provide. Thank you, Mr. Wickham. And Ms. Carter, I apologize. I referred to you as Katie Carter earlier. You were in fact, uh, I got your name wrong. Kathy Carter, uh, please, please weigh in. Uh, thank you. And, and no, I answer to a lot of things. That's, that's the best I've probably even called in my life. So uh, thank you for, for having me. And, and um, the only thing I would add is uh, it's our intention uh, to, to reach out to each of the council members' offices uh, and make sure that we have your input into uh, the beginning phases of the work that we're doing with the city family. Uh, we've obviously already, we have met with um, the new uh, e executive uh, group that the, the mayor has directed uh, so that we can start to, to make sure that we have fair and, and equal representation across each of these. We've also started to engage with labor uh, around their, their input. Uh, so we are at the beginning stages and are in support uh, of Mr. Wickham's uh, recommendation on the timelines, uh, but we're excited about the progress that we've already made and believe that we've got a lot more to go. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Mr. Roth, I understand you have uh, something to add. You've done considerable work on this as well. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for uh, mentioning. Um, just to add to what uh, both Kathy Carter and John Wickham have mentioned, a little more detail on, on what's, to, what's to come. So within the working groups, we have the community business procurement, local hire and sustainability groups. Um, as an initial milestone, the uh, LA28 has already committed to consulting with the city about the development of members and uh, will reach out to stakeholders as well. And that list of stakeholders um, is supposed to come from a, a wide array of uh, organizations such as labor, community, business and industry, academics, hospitality, and venue organizations. And that's not, a, that's not an exclusive list, but I think it shows the, the, how wide that uh, organization is uh, expected to, to call from different entities and stakeholders. Um, so again, by March 31st, 2023, the working groups are supposed to hold their first meeting. And by 2025, March 31st, uh, goals are to be defined for both the community business and procurement group, as well as the local hire group. Uh, sustainability working group is a little different in that it's intending to establish a sustainability plan um, to begin implementation at that point. So. Um, upcoming dates to target, March 31st, 2023, first meetings. By two years later, we should have plans and start implementation. Um, the same is true. There's a, there's a sequence 
mentioned in the reports for like arts and culture plan, uh, LA 28 is committed to beginning discussions with uh, government organizations, including our own, of course, and the county um, to discuss uh, arts and culture plan. Um, the same is true with the human rights strategy and uh, legacy entity. That's a later discussion. That's in 2028, um, January 31st, 2028. Um, and I don't want to belabor it anymore, um, but this document provides a lot of a, a roadmap for us to report back on in the future. And so as John had mentioned uh, by June 30th, uh, we hope to have a progress report then and then continue on after October 30th and, and so on. Um, just to finish up, there is no fiscal impact to this, just to provide that keynote and um, to the recommendations in this report and uh, we recommend approval. Thank you so much, Mr. Roth. Uh, any other presenter have anything to add uh, to this presentation? Uh, no, with that, I just want to once again thank our CLA and CO for their work on this. I, I understand the amount of work or have an understanding of the amount of work. Unless I do it myself, I don't fully understand the time you all have put into this. So to you know, review, analyze, coordinate, finalize, report on this very important matter. So I want to thank uh, Alex Whitehead, John Wickham, Robert Roth, Ben Seha, and of course, Sharon So and Matt Zabo, and from LA 2028, Patricia, Carla Collins, Kathy Carter, uh, for working with our departments, the mayor's office and my office with Star Parsamian. Um, I just have one question and I'll turn it over to my colleagues. And that is, um, how will uh, 20, uh, LA 2028 assure that all stakeholders and the city are given fair and equ equitable opportunities for actionable input in the working groups. In other words, how do you, how do you see this and what role can you all play in uh, just furthering uh, this, uh, this imperative? Uh, well, let me, I, I'll take that. Uh, obviously the um, we're, we're at the beginning of this. And so I think that as we, uh, I think appropriately have the right checks and balances of information flow and transparency. Uh, our first phase is to reach out and make sure we've got a wide, uh, wide input, both from the community as well as from the council members' offices uh, and a variety of stakeholders across the city uh, to make sure that we do have, to your point, um, equitable representation. Uh, and I think as we begin to report out on the progress, I think that uh, uh, making sure that we're all uh, staying true to, to a wide range of, of inputs is going to be imperative to uh, the process and ultimately our success. Uh, so we're going to rely on our city partners. Uh, to make sure that we are wide with the, uh, the requests so that we bring the right people uh, into each one of these working groups. Uh, we will um, be more than happy to take uh, input from the community. Uh, that'll be uh, through um, some, uh, they can provide us information and request recommendations on our website. Uh, so we do think that we'll, we'll open it up and ultimately uh, build a great group that will start to share out to the council uh, as we go through with these six month uh, reviews. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, Mr. Cedillo. Sir, thank you so much. I just want to uh, <clears throat> emphasize the importance of uh, uh, two areas. One is obviously organized labor, critical that they participate in it every level because one of the things that's, as we're all excited to see the the incredible economic positive impact that the games will have. One is the opportunities that it creates. And one for that is as we prep for the games, uh, the work that's going to get done, it's important that labor is involved because it creates where districts like mine, this is, will be the vehicle that they interface with organized labor uh, in, you know, in the trades, uh, in the service sector. Uh, at the airport, uh, so many areas, this one may be their first opportunity to interface with organized labor. If organized labor is integral to this whole process, then this creates that, um, that bridge, the on-ramp for them uh, into organized labor, gives them really critical experiences so that when the games uh, are done, uh, they're positioned to continue to participate uh, in, in the workforce. Second is 
arts and culture. And that's so critical because this is all about, uh, in many respects, entertainment and service and the excitement that is Los Angeles. And uh, both in art and in culture, and I'm specifically thinking about the culinary arts, uh, what an opportunity this creates for the city as we bring the world to Los Angeles, that uh, we need to make sure that we're uh, dealing with the right stakeholders, that we're connecting, that we have the right uh, uh, people at the, at the kitchen table, as we say, or the dining table, as we may say, uh, in this area, because that will be one of the key uh, attractions uh, as people come to Los Angeles. And so I stand here ready, willing, and able to assist you in any way with the resources and contacts uh, in both areas so that we can uh, make this the greatest games of all time. Councilman, your um, Department of Cultural Affairs has been very uh, heavily involved in this process to date. They've held a number of community meetings um, and they have been working with LA-28 extensively to develop goals and objectives. Um, but I will um, make sure that we bring up to them your point about culinary arts as well. Make sure that that's covered. Thank you so much, Mr. CDO, Mr. Wickham. and, and uh, John, also, just are, are we, how secure are we with uh, the Native American uh, representation in the working group? Uh, we should uh, have some further discussions with LA28 on um, places where that, we want to make sure that each group has the appropriate representation. Um, I think certainly the human rights um, strategy. Um, would be an area where we would want to have a participation by the Native American community. So uh, why don't we work with um, LA-28 and with your office in particular to find the best places for people to participate. And, and uh, also uh, uh, cultural affairs as well, uh, because there's such a, a strong cultural component there as well. But yes, uh, how our office can assist making those connections. I know that um, the Native American community would like to be very involved with uh, representation and, and uh, you know, elevation of the contributions and the profile of the local Native American community, which numbers in, well into the six figures uh, here in Los Angeles. So, so thank you. Um, uh, all right. So um, a, along with uh, LA 2028, and I, and I know you're working on uh, bringing uh, the County Federation of Labor uh, into this working group, and this was an instruction from our, our last uh, committee uh, hearing and from council. So I'd like to just also reiterate and make sure that LA-28 uh, ensures that labor is represented in each of the working groups. So, so please continue coordinating all labor appointments for the working groups through the Los Angeles County Feder uh, Federation of Labor Leadership. Um, that's uh, really important. So I'd like to just reiterate Mr. Cedillo's point. Uh, this is also a once in a generation uh, opportunity for jobs for for Los Angeles residents to grow uh, within the labor uh, movement here in the in the city and county of, of LA. Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, with that being said, uh, I'd like to offer the following instruction. Uh, and based on what we've heard, I'd like to amend recommendation number one in the report to read as follows. Instruct the city administrative officer and chief legislative analyst to report by June 30th of 2022 on the implementation of the working groups, planning groups, and other legacy elements as outlined herein and uh, with an emphasis on representation from the Native American community and of course, the County Federation of Labor Leadership. And if there are no objections, we are ready to call roll on this item as amended. Very good. Council Member O'Farrell. Aye. Council Member Buscaino. Aye. Councilmember Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Kerkorian. Aye. And Councilmember Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Very good. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Litt. Let's uh, move on to item number four, please. Item four, joint CAO CLA report relative to the 2022 annual report from Los Angeles Organizing Committee for the LA 28. Thank you. I'll head it back over to our CEO and CLA to go over this report before us. And uh, CAO, let's start with you. Hello again, uh, Robert Roth, CAO. Um, 
pursuant to the games agreement between the city and LA 28, prior to that in 2017's uh, MOU that we have with them, LA 28 provides us an annual report by March 31st of each year. That report contains prior year operations as well as financial condition and budget. Uh, notably, the 2028 games budget remains unchanged at $6.884 billion. Financial statements indicate that operating reserves during the year remain healthy, and that's due to continued payments from the IOC, as well as deferred um, deferral of planned contractual administrative and travel spending, largely due to COVID. Um, it is noted, though, in the financial statements, um, a deficit is indicated. Um, LA 28 states that significant revenues, such as ad revenues, are deferred and cannot be recognized at this point uh, until those services are delivered. Um, again, it's trying to emphasize the budget remains unchanged. Um, this deficit is a, is a timing issue and LA 28 can speak more to that matter. Um, further in the annual report, LA, uh, LA 28 notes that key commercial agreements were entered during the year with Salesforce, Comcast, Deloitte, and on location. Uh, the report also provides uh, updates on key issues, including management discussion and analysis, updates on insurance, uh, um, audited financial statements, uh, a listing of contracts over a million dollars, and um, they submit tax forms. This is a, on an ongoing basis. Um, the youth sports partnership is also discussed, and we've gone over that pretty thoroughly in the, the first two items today. Um, Finally, the games agreement was mentioned in their annual report, which we all know was entered between the city and LA 28. Um, it further defines processes and commitments. Um, central to that games agreement, we all know just as a refresher, it covers reimbursement of city services that are enhanced above our normal, and it provides those commitments, which we just discussed as well in the benchmarks discussion. So for workforce development, accessibility, sustainability, arts, culture, human rights, legacy, I might have missed something. Um, public safety. Um, the report recommendation though for council is to note and file because this report is submitted for informational purposes only. Um, Kathy Carter uh, has joined us and still joins us and is here to provide additional comments if she has any. Thank you. And uh, thank you again for, for the partnership, um, both from the, the CLA and the CAO. Uh, we feel like we're in a pretty good position. And uh, I recognize as, as well, this is my first council meeting. So thank you all uh, for, for being uh, uh, open to a newbie uh, in your midst. Um, and we look forward to working collaboratively across uh, all of the city family to continue the journey over the next number of years. Um, I think the um, uh, the work that we've done over the pandemic and ultimately um, to continue to pro progress forward uh, certainly hopefully highlights uh, our number one objective is to make sure that um, our incredible opportunity is all, also comes with a responsibility to the city uh, and to the taxpayers to make sure that we actually host uh, games that are both fiscally and low risk. Uh, and that's something that, that uh, is a, an ongoing mantra inside our offices. Uh, here at LA 28. Um, the only other things that I would uh, mention from uh, Mr. Roth's uh, comments are a couple of highlights uh, around uh, progress in 2021. Uh, first and foremost, we did set up uh, an athlete commission uh, that is highlighted by nine Olympians and nine Paralympians. Uh, that continue to uh, work in conjunction with Janet Evans, our chief athlete officer, uh, to continue to put athletes at the center of what we collectively will deliver uh, in terms of an experience. Uh, we've also been engaging with uh, youth council, youth community members of the city through a youth council, our first and inaugural youth council that we stood up even uh, while we were unable to meet with them in person, we uh, were able to, to do so virtually. Uh, and then just recently, uh, starting in December and then uh, officially added to the program uh, for LA 28. Three iconic sports have been added to our program in what we call the three S's, uh, which is surf, sport, and sport climbing uh, that will be added to the LA 28 games. Uh, and we're very, very excited. And the last thing I would comment on uh, was a poll that was recently conducted by the LA Times, um, where we saw almost 80% of residents of the city of LA that are supportive of us hosting the games uh, and are very supportive of, of the work that we have ongoing um, and what we anticipate bringing to bear. So uh, many other things that are ongoing, but I just wanted to highlight those in addition to uh, what Mr. Roth had uh, outlined before. But uh, again, thank you. Um, we do anticipate um, bringing great news 
as we continue these progress reports over the next six uh, and a half years. We're not ready to put the clock up yet, so I still say six and a half years. Uh, but thank you all, and we're excited to continue to work with everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Carter, uh, for your remarks and your your dedication, your clear-headed approach to all of this. It's it's uh, being received very well, and I appreciate it. Ms. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, um, and uh, Kathy, I just I, I'm grateful to hear that the youth council has been stood up. Um, you know, we have a citywide youth council that's been established uh, through our youth development department, and I was just wondering if there's an opportunity to perhaps have uh, a liaison serve in that uh, in this capacity as well, uh, so that we have kind of the integrated conversation that connects uh, the different youth councils uh, and makes them familiar. Because we're going through the applications right now. Uh, they're going to be appointed uh, eminently. So uh, just wondered if there would still remain an opportunity to uh, include a member of our youth council on this uh, Olympic one. Yes, um, we, we would be more than happy to, to engage with you and, and, and with uh, the youth council of the city. And, and uh, we had had an initial conversation, but that was probably early and I'm sure the pandemic got in the way of things. So we'd be more than happy to continue to engage on that. So thank you. Terrific, thanks. Right, and uh, Mr. Krikorian. Uh, Mr. Krikorian, you're still on mute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you and welcome, Ms. Carter. Um, but two things. Um, one, I would like to ask you to uh, expand a little bit on uh, the issues around the uh, deficit, which I understand is more of a cash flow than a budgetary issue, but still I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then second, I've, I've asked in the past what um, LA 28 is learning uh, from or has learned from uh, Tokyo and now also from Beijing uh, as post COVID uh, Olympic Games and whether there are any changes that need to be made or that we should be anticipating any new best practices uh, relating to insurance coverage or otherwise. Um, we've talked about that before, but since Paris is four years ahead of us, uh, I'm wondering what we've learned uh, from Paris and any changes that they may be making uh, in light of those uh, new circumstances in the post-COVID uh, era. Um, is there anything that, that you've been informed by uh, that, that, that they're doing that maybe we should be adopting as best practices as well? Thank you for those. Um, let me take them um, sort of in sequential order if I could. Um, let me start by, by addressing the, the financial um, uh, report. So essentially um, what we've done is we're showing the, the income statement and ultimately uh, how we are the revenue recognition uh, for the year of, uh, of the report. And what that means is that um, because we were just beginning operations for all intents and purposes, while we are collecting revenue, we have not actually provided the services for the recognition of that revenue in the calendar year. Uh, so our cash flow is actually very, very healthy. Uh, we have uh, money that's essentially in the bank, um, but it's just a timeline by which uh, we are actually reporting out the expenses and the, 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 basically the assets and the liabilities. Uh, so it should cause no concern. It's just literally um, just the, the way the accounting uh, of the revenues and the expenses are coming in. Uh, so we feel very, very comfortable with where we are and that we're tracking as per uh, our initial plans. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, let me address uh, Tokyo, Beijing and, and the Paris 24. Um, first and foremost, I would suggest the, the, the benefit that we have uh, by the timeline that we have had uh, to, to begin the operations of LA-28. Um, Paris 2024 has been an unbelievable guide for us. Uh, they've been terrific partners across all of the various uh, departments within their organization and, and really have served as a, a, a close representative of, of what we are going to see in the next couple of years. And so they've actually been, I think, for us organizationally, probably the best uh, partner in the journey thus far. We we did learn, though, in Tokyo and, and Beijing, really key and uh, important lessons 
around uh, how and what we should do to challenge the operating assumptions of what was perhaps um, the way we thought we needed to do things previously. And so rest assured, and I, uh, we, we certainly continue to challenge the operating assumptions of what was um, the way to host these games previously. And we look at everything as an opportunity to refine and do it better as we approach 2028. So um, that certainly is part and parcel to what we're thinking about with regard to insurance as an example. Uh, now, we know that the future will be different than what the past um, uh, currently or what we've seen in the past, uh, but that is certainly becoming a part of what we are starting to go out to market with as it relates to what kind of uh, products that will ultimately protect uh, all of the city and, and ultimately the games and, and what we will uh, undertake over the next number of years. But, uh, but so we're uh, constantly in a state of learning and, and sort of challenging the, the basic assumptions of what was versus what will be for, as we go through the, the next number of years. Uh, but again, Paris 2024 has been terrific for us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Rodriguez again. I had I just forgot to lower my hand. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, any uh, other comments? I see uh, no other comments. Uh, so I'd like to move to approve this item. Uh, Mr. Lee, call the roll. So moved. Thank you. Yes. Councilmember O'Farrell? Aye. Councilmember Buscaino? Aye. Councilmember Rodriguez? Aye. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. And Councilmember Cedillo? Cedillo, aye. Very good. That uh, passes as well. Uh, colleagues, this wraps up the special uh, committee of the uh, uh, Ad Hoc Olympic 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games. And uh, let us continue moving forward in the spirit of this foundational work to have the most successful games in Olympics history, faster, higher, stronger together with solidarity, fueling our mission to make the world a better place through sport. And with that, do we have anything else before us today, Mr. Lid? Uh, that clears the desk. Thank you so much, everyone, for your incredible work. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.